interactive and a lot of questions from all the participants in today's webinar as they were in the last one. So I think uh, we should start because the, the total duration of this website is only one hour and there are a lot of things to be discussed. So we can start right away. Uh, uh, good evening to all the participants today. Uh, sure. And uh, we, uh, we will start this part two of uh, uh, the uh, home buyers, uh, uh, how the IBC can help home buyers. That is the subject today. And uh, the co-panelist today that we have is uh, uh, CA Anand Sonbadra. And he, he has also been handling a couple of cases as RP um, under AAA banner. He is a senior partner with AAA Insolvency. So he would also be sharing his experiences. And uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Umesh Goel with us, who actually is a bank banker. So he would give uh, bankers perspective. Uh, uh, we have CA Ankit Goel, who is uh, also a valuer, a registered valuer with uh, IBBI. And he is, he's handling uh, um, a registered valuers uh, entity with all uh, class of assets. So he would also provide us the, uh, the difficulties that are being faced in the valuation of real estate uh, projects, uh, which is very important for resolution or uh, otherwise the, uh, the concept of uh, secured creditors and then the home buyers in trust, all these are somehow there are conflicting uh, views about it. Uh, so with this, we would like to say that in the last part one, uh, which was on, uh, I think last Saturday, uh, part one, we uh, deliberated on the remedies available with home buyers in case they are not able to get the possession of their uh, property, the remedies available under RERA, the remedies available under the Consumer Protection Act. We also deliberated about Arbitration and Conciliation Act. We also deliberated in case the criminal actions are taken against the promoters. So all that was discussed, including the Competition Commission and including the Code of Civil Procedures. Everything was discussed, but uh, it was concluded that it some uh, in some cases, there is some kind of relief which can be taken by home buyers in case the default is not for a large number of home buyers. If the default is on, only for few numbers and the company is surviving, company is acting and the company is a going concern, then of course, some people can get some relief out of RERA or out of Consumer uh, Protection Act. So that was uh, concluded. Uh, so today we would... Uh, uh, complete uh, this subject, how this insolvency law can help home buyers. So I would share my uh, screen. Uh, just give me one second. <clears throat> so we have uh, done most of the first part, which is uh, the various other laws, remedies available that was all seen in the last webinar, consumer, land protection, arbitration, everything was uh, uh, deliberated. So this is where we stopped because of the time constraints and like how this insolvency uh, resolution process under uh, insolvency and bankruptcy code actually can help home buyers getting a remedy against the defaulting promoters. Uh, the, there are a couple of, um, uh, uh, recent uh, developments like one uh, that we had this uh, Supreme Court judgment in the case of Manish Kumar versus Union of India. This judgment came on 19th of uh, February 2021. And in this uh, Supreme Court judgment, the uh, law which was made that the one single home buyer cannot file an application for insolvency of uh, uh, the builder company. So they, uh, the law was made that 10% or 100 home buyers collectively can move an application for the insolvency of 
uh, real estate company. Uh, if the uh, allottees are say 700, then 10% means 70 are minimum required to participate in an application which can be filed before NCLT for insolvency of the company. So this uh, law was upheld as uh, constitutional and uh, the, uh, the viruses of this law was completely upheld by Honorable Supreme Court. Uh, so after that, uh, now it is very clear that one single home buyer cannot file an application against the real estate developer, against the real estate company. So looking into that, uh, we uh, at AAA actually have, have kind of uh, uh, created a platform where uh, the home buyers can register their uh, stress. Uh, and then it will be our effort to collate uh, the 100 or 10 percent home buyers of one project. So what we have done on our own portal, which is the uh, www.insolvencyandbankruptcy.in, uh, which is the portal of AAA Insolvency Professionals LLP. So we have uh, we have already uh, listed uh, most of the RERA uh, registered projects. Uh, any Allotty, any home buyer or any allotty of any property will have to just visit um, the find out uh, uh, his project and then mention the name and the uh, address and the contact details and the particulars of the booking that he has done in that particular property. Then in that case, it will be like we would have people who actually would be just sharing and then it will be our duty to reach out to them, uh, also find out similar uh, home buyers make a kind of a collective group of 10% or 100 and then file an application. That's what the uh, project, the AAA has uh, launched. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, only after this Manish Kumar uh, versus Union of India Supreme Court order. So this particular facility may be used because otherwise it is very difficult to, I would also request the associations of home buyers or associations of allottees in case there are any. So they should also try to uh, pass on a message that this is the link. And on this link, they should register their name, address, and the property number and the project number. So that actually would be our endeavor to find out other people of the similar uh, um, difficulty. So we will <coughs> kind of uh, uh, do that part of uh, collating them and uh, filing an application to NCLT. And sir, uh, here I would like to add one thing. Once we get an information about a home buyer, we try to understand the point. It is not necessary that uh, we will direct him towards IBC. We may give some good suggestions also in what manner they can have a viable solution to their problem. So uh, logging into our sites and record, recording their details will enable them to have a good thought process for solution of their problem. Of course, IBC stands out to be the best possible solution, but in case other solutions are also viable, they are also suggested to the home buyers. So it is a win-win situation for home buyers to go to our page. Thank you, Meji, that you, because I know that you have worked on this uh, portal. Mm -hmm. So you know the details, you know the objective. So thank you for, uh, 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 adding the uh, uh, further uh, facts about it. So uh, this, uh, uh, so like as we understand now, this uh, application has to be filed by 10% or 100 allottees. So we have, we are trying to facilitate home buyers allottees who actually are not uh, able to collate and uh, to um, like um, uh, uh, have 100 people or requisite numbers of home buyers. So we are trying to communicate with them. We are trying to create groups and then the application will be filed to NCLT. Uh, the, why we are saying that this uh, NCLT uh, IBC would be better. So the first thing that we understand that whenever this insolvency is declared for a company, CIRP order is passed, immediately RP, IRP, they would actually have the power to protect whatever assets are available to take over the books of accounts in the in case it is available and like the whatever is uh, presently available with the builder 
uh, real estate company, including the books of accounts, including the records of allottees, all, all that will be taken over by insolvency resolution process, including including the bank account of the company. So the promoters, the directors, they would not have any access to their bank accounts and they would not have any access to their assets. They would not be able to uh, misuse any of the assets of the company once insolvency starts. And uh, the uh, books of accounts would primarily give the information about allottees and then it will also be verified by individual claims which would be filed by allottees. So uh, when we actually do this exercise of uh, getting the claims from the uh, allottees and then preparing a kind of uh, detailed sheet uh, for the claims that we receive. Because the ultimately our objective is to find out uh, how much how many was the how much was the total area to be constructed how much was booked where the allottees are claiming their booking they're claiming their right on lien on that particular property how much is the unsold inventory because this helps us in finding out what are the assets of the company uh, because in under insolvency uh, the understanding the assets is very very important and the liabilities of course would be known to us by claims which would be filed by public at large so we only have to match assets and liabilities for finding a resolution. And section 53 is very clear that the first priority will go to this, second will to go to this, and third will go to this. Also, the first priority is given to the expenditure that would be incurred for the process. But the second priority is also very important, which is a secured, a secured creditor's priority. So in real estate cases also, in case there are banks who have a security interest on the assets of a real estate company, they would have priority. Although, although we have claimed in some cases that the home buyers are also secured uh, uh, creditors. And we would touch base this issue a little later on because see the, when we see the definition of, uh, uh, I would come to that because we still feel that the home buyers are secured creditors because there is a different, uh, uh, there is a different definition which has been used in IBC as compared to the definition of security interest under Surface Act or under any other uh, act. So these primary duties of the resolution professional will immediately take the control of the uh, control of the company. Now, at this moment, <clears throat> at this moment, I would also say uh, the, I would also say the new structure <clears throat> which has been introduced uh, by way of an ordinance on 4th of April and the regulations are made on 9th of April, rules are made on 9th of April. Now under this structure, the resolution can still be found and that would be easier than anything. Why? Number one, that the real estate companies are also MSME. The definition of real estate companies now is like the, either the company should be a manufacturing company or a company should be a service providing company. So providing real estate is a service providing because the real estate is like the uh, the builders they will take <coughs> advance from the home buyers and uh, the they would give the they would give the construction services and they would uh, uh, work as a service that they are providing to the home buyers. So the real estate companies are also MSME. <coughs> In this uh, new structure, <coughs> all the home buyers and the builder can sit together. They can find out what are the difficulties in completing the project. Uh, the trust deficit that is already there. The, they are not agreeing, they are not uh, trusting each other's versions. So then in that case, uh, the, uh, the one, one RP and uh, the entire uh, uh, process of uh, <clears throat> pre-packaged insolvency resolution process that actually will help finding solution and based on the agreement between home buyers and builder the application will be submitted to adjudicating authority <clears throat> and that resolution plan can be approved and the resolution plan can be implemented the promoter can also commit further investment in the construction the bankers can also say that yes we would be taking little lesser amount and because the company doesn't have that amount of assets 
the land owners also can say that okay we will also settle down with some lesser uh, benefit uh, because the company doesn't have any money otherwise the company go into go will go into regular cirp or fear into liquidation and then everyone will lose uh, uh, their assets and the value of the assets will further diminish so this new structure of pirp can also be used uh, for the real estate companies uh, yesterday uh, i did a webinar on the new newly introduced process which is called pre packaged insolvency resolution process and that would be available on youtube tomorrow and i would uh, trust that in case you would see that because that's part 1 part 2 of the same because the subject is little larger part 2 of that particular webinar would be concluded tomorrow at 5 uh, uh, 7 pm we will start yes, we have, we'll start at 7 pm uh, so tomorrow at 7 pm we would start the uh, part 2 of the uh, the pre packaged insolvency resolution process so on this slide we are saying that this uh, home buyers are financial creditors in fact this uh, the definition is is made in such a manner that any particular person any any person giving any advance for uh, for buying anything that would be considered as a financial creditor so the home buyers are financial creditor this has been held see how we find uh, 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 the how we find the resolution under ibc so first that we actually get this valuation done first we get the valuation for the uh, all the assets of the company uh, we get it done from an ibbi registered valuer although there are problems that we are facing because the registered valuers they value the real estate projects in a different uh, different manner everyone have their own viewpoint but however uh, we uh, we have a uh, based on the practical experience uh, we have concluded that the uh, in our cases the valuation would be done in this manner and that actually has been helping i would ask uh, uh, ca ankit goel uh, who is also a registered valuer and he is also heading a, a registered valuers entity as triple a valuers valuation professionals llp so ankit uh, if you would uh, uh, kindly uh, explain how the valuations of a real estate company uh, it can be concluded i have few specific questions in case the land is on, not owned by the uh, corporate debtor the corporate debtor has got only an uh, arrangement of uh, development with the land owner and by that uh, the land development agreement the uh, builder will get uh, will they will construct and will get some space of the constructed area and some space would be given to the land owners as a consideration for giving their land for the development of buildings so in case the land is owned by the corporate debtor in case land is on not owned by the corporate debtor in case the project has not started construction in case the project has started construction and it is at an advanced stages please cover all these details in case we have to get this valuation issue solved uh, uh, so that we we would like to deliberate on this ankit uh, see ankit boy so the basic so the basic concept of valuation is to find the highest and best use now whether it is liquidation whether it is fair value whether it is market value whatever nomenclature you look at the value is always supposed to look at the highest and best use the highest and best use may be the existing use it may be an alternative use so i always share this example that say you want to value a saudi property which is you know maybe a one story house constructed way back in 1950s 60s whenever this uh, whenever saudi colony came into being and then you have that one story house now if somebody wants to value that house or that land and building how will that person value it so the answer to that question is that i will not value it using a rental uh, income method that i will see that okay what will be the income that will come to me in the next uh, through the rental or through other um, uh, accruals to that property i will rather look at uh, what is the highest and best use and in that case the highest and best use most probably is um, uh, pulling down that construction and uh, building up a, a, a four story house uh, out of which maybe the builder or the person who is constructing the, uh, that uh, building will sell out each floor to uh, different people 
and then realize the market value of those flats so the answer is that the value of the land in that case will be uh, maybe the amount of uh, uh, value realizable from the sale of those flats less the construction cost less the profit that that builder might want to keep for himself so this is one example coming to uh, a property a full fledged real estate project which is being uh, uh, which is being taken up by a company which is now insolvent maybe in insolvency there the idea is to look at what is the most probable uh, uh, what is the most probable and what is the highest and best use of this project going forward in most cases the highest value realizable is in uh, completing the project and uh, handing over the value to the uh, creditors so when we look at uh, ibc as a code also and ibc as a law we see that the ibc requires the valuer only to value the assets and not the liabilities so in case we talk about somebody pulling pulling in the land somebody pulling in the resources to construct building on that land uh, somebody maybe as a home buyer pulling in the contribution in the form of installments to build that uh, build those flats bringing in the money that is required so all these are people who have rendered services or who have given some kind of money to the real estate project to construct that property or to construct that real estate project and they all, all in one way or the other will become party is has given the land and they have agreed to uh, they, they have uh, uh, entered into an agreement with the uh, with the builder uh, that uh, the builder can pay for the land in installments in that case uh, the idea is that the remaining amount that is payable to that creditor uh, to that to that land owning agency or land leasing agency is a liability so a valuer is id not supposed to look at all those liabilities and is supposed to look at what is going to come in and what are the sources from which it is going to come in so what we have done in typically in many projects is that we have first seen that what are the what are those houses or those units what are the total units that are sanctioned what are the total units that are most, most likely to be constructed then we look at what is the what are the those units which have already where where an agreement to sell has been signed where the consideration of those flats or the value of these flats which is realizable in present or future is already fixed so say i have maybe 100 allottees who have already sold my flats some of them i have sold my flat for 3000 rupees per square foot some of them i have sold it for 5000 rupees per square foot i can't change that because i'm obliged by the agreement to sell or the builder by builder uh, uh, flat buyer or uh, uh, flat owner builder agreement and i will look at the market price of the remaining uh, flats which have not yet been uh, where where there is no agreement to sell where where there is no builder buyer agreement and in those cases we look at the market price we anticipate that what will be the value what will be the time that will be uh, taken for the for these units to be constructed and then also we look into the factor as to what is the value or what is the construction uh, cost uh, uh, or the completion cost cost to completion for that uh, property so the idea is to one have a have a number of uh, the total uh, uh, value which is going to come in from those people where the agreement to sell is there i'm not talking about the net value i'm talking about the gross value that is receivable from them not the amount that is realizable further the total amount that is realizable from them Uh, uh, f- from the flat sale, then those flats which have not been uh, the, where there is no agreement to sell, the value that is recoverable or realizable from the market rate, and then subtracting from that the cost of completion of that uh, that building. Now that's that's how we normally computed, so, and we Ankit, estimate uh, resume. I think uh, so. I, I will think, just complete. Uh, the conclusion is that yeah. So I will just complete that this is also the method which is prescribed in IVS four one zero. IVS four one zero is a specific standard on what they the how they have named the standard is developmental property. So they they have prescribed a separate standard. IVS four hundred talks about real estate. IVS land and building. IVS four one zero talks about developmental property, and this is the exact method that is prescribed in that IVS also. So well, I think one uh, basic assumption that uh, a valuer has to take. Uh, that they would value this real estate company as a going concern and they would assume that the project would be completed if there are allottees and substantial allottees 
however, in case there are only like ten percent lotties as compared to the total space available, then he can even assume he can assume that the ten plus ten to ten percent lotties can be considered as a liability, and I would value the total land building a uh, total land and building whatever it is. So that will be a separate valuation. However, in case the lotties are substantial part of the uh, uh, substantial part of the asset has actually been uh, uh, earmarked for each lotties. So then it will be considered as third party uh, interest being created on this property, and the property is specified with flat number, with floor number, and builder buyer agreement has been executed. Installments of uh, uh, construction cost has been given by the lotty regularly. So then, in that case, the lien, the uh, right of specific performance of the uh, home buyer, that cannot be. Diminished in case of insolvency. Uh, therefore, the valuation should be done, assuming that the project will be completed, and what would be the ultimate value of this project if it is completed, and that we should be valued on a liquidation uh, parameters. Yep. Uh, so uh, the. in this real estate companies the resolution plan can be submitted by any builder or any other person who is interested to take over the company uh, the the most important is that the resident welfare assured association or association of lotties can also submit a resolution plan and we have uh, given opportunities to various association of persons by stipulating different eligibility criteria for submission of a uh, expression of interest and subsequently resolution plan so in case the home allotment of uh, association of lotties submit a resolution plan uh, in in my opinion they already have a huge stake in the project so they would not run away so we are giving them relaxed eligibility criteria regarding experience net worth profitability everything that we relax for them because nobody can do better than those people who have actually invested and the entire risk is with them and they actually have to live in that property uh, the uh, the resolution plan uh, uh, would offer home and in some cases the resolution plan can also uh, offer refund to all the claimants as i said that there are projects where the booking is only about 10 15% and any person who will come as a resolution applicant would like to say okay you i uh, give me the company i will completely pay off all the lotties and because he would uh, may have something which is a different kind of uh, uh, different kind of uh, project in hand so uh, i think uh, as i was saying that we are trying in some cases that the home buyers are also secured creditors and we are taking the help of uh, we are taking the plea which is given in the transfer of properties act the real estate regulation and development act 2016 uh we see based on these uh, and and the definition given in rera based on these things uh, we are uh, of the opinion that the home buyers are secured creditors allotees are secured creditors and in that case we are also uh, we, we also believe in the definition of security interest where this performance oh, of an okay. obligation is also written as Uh, the uh, as as a charge so this is uh, not wasting much of time on the secured creditor concept and uh, uh, the as application of course we have already discussed how the application can be filed so i think uh, uh, anand ji uh, in the when we say that the home buyers are financial creditors uh, we have do we have any uh, dispute on this number 1 number 2 uh, also i would like to ask you uh, your experience in the case of shubhkamna where you have uh, uh, you see you and your lawyer have actually argued in this in this manner that the noida authority and uh, greater noida authority like organization uh, who actually give the land on lease for development purposes to builders so whether the amount which is payable by the real estate company to noida authority and greater noida authority like organizations uh, would that be uh, uh, 
operational creditor can you just try to do something uh, some throw some light on this sure i think this relevant slide uh, relevant slide is in front of you in case you would like sure, to sure 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 help no, I, I remember this case and we did a lot of preparation thank you energy in fact uh, what what happened to us uh, any kind of a lease, uh, land arrangement so land arrangement could be an outright sale where the company buys the land in that case uh, the asset is owned by the company uh, there is no claim on the land but uh, majority of uh, uh, cases that we have seen uh, in case of uh, noida and greater noida is where the land has been given on lease by the authority to the project now the crux is looking at the lease agreement a lease agreement can be two in nature either a financial lease or an operating lease so we went through the uh, we did some deep learning on the on the lease agreement that was executed by an order authority and and then we went back to the definition where uh, 58 uh, where it says any lease if it is in the nature of a uh, financial lease then the lessor there can be treated as a financial creditor in case of noida authority the point then then came look at the accounting standard we looked at the accounting standard the accounting standard which deals with the uh, 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 leases is as 116 and it clearly says that a lease would be classified as a financial lease if it transfers substantially all the risk and reward incidental to the ownership of underlying asset which means the risk and rewards associated with the land if that is transferred to the lessee which is the company here in my case shubhkamna the case that we are talking about if that were true then it would be financial lease otherwise it won't be and and uh, further if we uh, do a bit of study on 116 accounting standard 116 uh, clause 62 uh, lists out and they remain on the previous slide only clause 62 uh, lists out certain conditions which makes it uh, clear whether that lease would be operating lease or not so what are those conditions let's quickly go through first one of them says that if the lease transfers ownership at the end of the lease period in case of noida and greater noida leases the ownership of land is never transferred it's only the leasehold right or right to use which is given to the uh, developers or the companies who get land allotment the second one is if the lessee has an option i will simplify the paragraph in layman's language uh, to purchase the underlying asset at a substantially lower value than the fair market value at a date in future and that arrangement is made today there is no option which is in the lease which is given to the lessee or to the company to buy that land at any time in future third point is if the lease term for the major part of the economic life of the asset the asset here is land land's life is indefinite and looking at the utility of the land 90 years of lease is minuscule so it is not the lease term is not for the major or substantial part of the economic life of the asset the other one is whether the lessee only can use it without major modification the answer to that is no a land is a barren land which is given with certain amount of development it can be given to any builder in the same condition in which it is given to the current company the next one is that if there is a right for the lessee to cancel the lease and any loss associated with the cancellation can be borne by lessee the relevant clauses that we had with not authority there is no uh, right for the lessee or the company to cancel the lease on top of that in case if ever there is an increase in the value of the land the sole deciding authority would be noida authority and the incremental portion of the value unearned increase as the term it in the, in the lease term uh, a certain percentage to be decided by noida authority is to be taken by noida losses and gains don't come to the lessee 
And the last point that we had there was, if the lessee has the ability to continue the lease for a second term or a secondary period at a length that is substantially lower than that, there is no question of cancellation or automatic renewal. So looking at all these grounds, uh, our argument was, and which the Honorable Tribunal agreed with us, and they ordered on our behalf saying, looking at these, uh, the lease agreement between Shubhkarna and Noda Authority was an operating lease, and it has to be treated as an operational creditor. So applicant so, cannot be granted of a financial creditor and cannot access. The current matter is in unclear, and uh, the order has been reserved. Uh, and Noda Authority did go in appeal there. The order has been reserved there. We will soon get to know uh, uh, the order of the appellate authority. Thank you, Ananji. So the, the order that uh, was given by Honorable NCLT New Delhi, that was in the case of uh, uh, Concord Infrastructure Private Limited versus Shubh Kamna Built Tech Private Limited, and uh, that was against Noida Authority. Uh, and Mr. Anand Sonbadra is the RP in that case. Uh, uh, going further, uh, see, when we actually in the real estate cases, when we constitute committee of creditors, in most of the cases, the home buyers will become part of the committee of creditors. However, as class of creditors, they are not entitled to uh, attend and participate into the COC meeting unless uh, they, uh, they, they can only participate through an authorized representative. However, we uh, have uh, uh, used some of the provisions of the uh, regulations where it has been said that if the COC uh, decides, the COC can allow any person to participate into the COC meeting. So we are taking that advantage of the regulation. We appoint observers in the COC meeting and those observers would be given a right to attend the COC meetings so that the transparency is visible in the entire process. So this has helped us uh, achieving a lot because in 18, 19 cases of real estate that we have done, it is all because of the uh, trust of the home buyers and also kind of transparency that we are we, we, we were able to uh, display in the COC meetings where the home buyers were sitting as observers. And in fact, uh, they would become the bridge between the uh, RP and the uh, home buyers at large. So whatever they would see, whatever they would understand, they would communicate to the uh, home buyers at large. So there would not be much chances of any misunderstanding, miscommunication, because they would be sitting in the COC meeting. Most of the decisions, most of the appointment of professionals will be done in their uh, presence and also in the cons in their consultation. So this uh, uh, process of appointment of observers, this we are experiencing in uh, many cases, most of the cases rather, and this is actually giving a lot of trust this is what we are writing the concept of observers and uh, this actually uh, we we call them as participant in the meeting and the uh, the the concept of observer uh, the the minutes of the meeting also can be recorded uh, we we are saying that the section 211 uh, the defines the participant in a coc meeting uh, either as per section 24 or as authorized by a coc so whenever it is authorized by COC, that actually shows uh, the uh, that shows uh, that the observers are attending the meeting with a kind of complete approval of the committee of creditors, which we normally we get. Of late, we have now seen that since the uh, lot of litigation is going on in most of the real estate cases, so some with the uh, the kind of government authorities like land development authorities or the licensing authorities. So some kind of litigation is going on in these uh, cases. Some kind of litigation is going on uh, be between the claimants because if there are claimants, claims comes later. And also the because there are a lot of home buyers, the, some resolutions are being passed, some are not being passed. So the litigations, uh, attachment of assets, all this is uh, kind of uh, taking a lot of time to getting the resolution plans approved or getting the uh, entire CIRP process completed. 
of rate we have seen and we researched a lot so we found that the rp with the consultation of committee of creditors would have all the powers uh, of the board of directors of the real estate company so when we actually started understanding those powers so we actually thought that the uh, the, the we thought that the construction can continue in all the real estate projects the rp and the coc has powers to call for the next installment of funds from the home buyers so they can also raise interim finance they can also uh, file an application to take occupation certificate and completion certificate uh, they the they can attend to the requirements of allottees like uh, the uh, transfer the applications the nominee applications the uh, then then there are like uh, noc applications resale application uh, the uh, any kind of uh, Uh, implementation of a will or a succession certificate or or a gift all this can be handled by the uh, rp and committee of creditors so this actually will keep the trust going in fact in many cases now we've started uh, taking up the construction of the uh, projects by raising money from the home buyers keeping it in an account and giving that complete transparency to everyone and the construction has started since we were looking at the resolution the resolution was delayed because of the litigation so uh, the difficulties uh, regarding the uh, lease of the land when the lease is cancelled uh, the lease in some kind of uh, litigations are pending before uh, uh, the nclt that if the lease of the land is cancelled by land development agency then uh, whether this uh, uh i ibc has powers or not to direct them to renew the lease revalidate the lease this is something which is presently pending before different courts so the decision has not been taken whether the nclt or the resolution plan uh, if approved can stipulate that the the land owner would not get much money or the land owner will also get haircut and that too just like to i'd just that, like to add a yeah just yeah. That, yes yes please yes so so the supreme honorable supreme court uh, in decision and in the case of gujarat urja nigam versus amit kumar uh, gave a judgment saying that if the asset is uh, extremely important for the resolution of the corporate uh, debtor Or the company which is in insolvency and taking away that asset would certainly become the cause of death of that particular uh, company, and uh, uh, the cancellation has taken place during the CRP period. Then it can be cancelled uh, by NCLTs. They have the powers under 65C uh, of the IBC provision. so it was restored in this case the ppa was cancelled and without the ppa any any uh, uh, electricity generation company which has to sell its uh, to to distribution state owned distribution company without ppa will be dead so if a license is cancelled during the pendency of uh, insolvency period or during the crp period and taking away that asset would cause the death of the Uh, corporate debtor for certain in that case and so this had the power to restore that asset to the company and the company so so i think this uh, also can be used uh, in some cases where the lease is cancelled during cirp so the present disputes which are not being settled is when the lease is cancelled before the cirp date uh, so uh, that's also something which is uh, uh, one Uh, is a question and how it would be resolved in other cases also when there is a, a joint development agreements are made between land owners and real estate company the joint development agreement says that the builder will develop the real estate company will develop the project will invest money on this and uh, am i audible yes sir stand up and continue because Sorry, my uh, the power is uh, off so i'm not sure whether this uh, I can uh, hear you. Kind okay. kindly continue. Yeah. So, the 
the basic question is whether this uh, lease, uh, the land development, uh, uh, joint development agreement would be valid or not. In most of the cases, when there is a dispute, when there is no construction going on, then the uh, land owners also try to cancel the joint development agreement. And whenever it has been seen that this cancellation is before CIRP date, you know, the, I think the, this matter is pending uh, for, and for adjudication and, and nothing less than Supreme Court can help where the uh, land owner uh, may be uh, who has given the land on lease or the land has been given to the corporate debtor on a joint development agreement and on a sharing basis. In, in, in all these cases, uh, what would happen if the uh, because of the non compliance because of the non payment the uh, land owner has cancelled the agreement may it be a lease agreement may it be a joint development agreement before the before the start of cirp then uh, uh, somebody has to take a decision some court has to take a decision nothing less than supreme court that the uh, the person who has supplied the land or who has provided the services like leasing of the land services they are also a stakeholder and they are also they will also participate into the resolution process they will also file their claim and then according to the availability of the assets again according to the viability everyone would be offered the amount which is due to them as per the liquidation value so this is, this has to happen in case this would not happen then most of the disputes regarding the joint development agreement and uh, and lease agreement that actually will continue till the time this decision comes. So uh, the we would actually be discussing in this webinar the difficult uh, and the uh, scenarios that we are experiencing rather than going uh, clause by clause. So <clears throat> the <clears throat> information memorandum that we make <clears throat> in the real estate companies, uh, and those information memorandums are also kind of uh, uh, based on the more and more information about the allottees, also about the amount received from them, amount receivable from them, unsold inventory, the approximate cost con cost of construction, although the cost of construction would be considered by the uh, resolution applicant and uh, they would have their own estimate. Even for expression of interest, the eligibility criteria, the evaluation matrix, if home buyers are only or the largest uh, voters or vote largest uh, share in the COC, then they would prefer that all these uh, uh, documents like expression of interest, eligibility criteria, evaluation matrix, everything will have those parameters where the association of allottees also can participate. And none of these documents, none of these eligibility criteria should make them uh, like ineligible for the uh, submission of resolution plan. So this is our experience that whenever we prepare information memorandum expression of interest eligibility criteria evaluation matrix and RFRP, all these documents we take care that if a uh, LOT or association comes forward, so then they should not get a kind of uh, 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 ouster they should not they should not be even declared as ineligible because of the some eligibility criteria or because of some minimum pre-qualifications so this we take care while we'll make the information memorandum for real estate companies so as uh, the practically uh, we would see uh, the uh, everything that we do we take care of the uh, home buyers in trust uh, the may it be expression of interest, may it be eligibility criteria for real estate company. <clears throat> so we have so, a few questions. You you want to yeah. take up some questions? Yeah, we should take up the questions now. So Mr. KV, KV Prabhu is asking that in a big real estate company with more than 20 unfinished projects, with a project-wise resolution plan is possible. And uh, he talks about a company, a Bangalore-based company, which was closed in 2016 wherein uh, where there are many litigation lands and directors are arrested and RP is appointed. Now, he says whether clear projects projects issued can be. So, he's asking in case those projects where there are no issues, there are no, there are no litigations, can be solved on priority by the RP. And he's asking for the procedure for the same. So, it seems that there are multiple projects within the same company. That's his question. 
I think uh, the analysis has to be done uh, from project to project. If there are projects where the possession had actually been offered and the, uh, there is no complaint from any of the allottee, then I don't think there is any point taking claims from them. Rather, the RP should consider themselves as the uh, board of directors of the real estate company. So uh, if they uh, have to, if, they, if there is any money which is receivable from them, the RP should take that money and should get the project completed rather than taking their claims uh, as, as, as claimants. Because see, like uh, if they have uh, uh, been given the possession, they have been offered the possession and that too before the CIRP, uh, then they were also not the applicant to NCLT. I think the RP can on case to case basis uh, consider that since the possession has been given to them, possession has been offered to them, Maybe in some cases, the title has not been transferred because of the occupation certificate is not there. In fact, we, uh, we were handling a case uh, where the possession was given to uh, the allottees. A power of attorney was uh, registered in the name of allottees. Occupation certificate was not received. NOC from the bank was not received. And the agreement to sell was registered. Stamp duty was paid. So then we took the advantage of various definitions under the Transfer of Properties Act and also under the Income Tax Act. And we said that since the, uh, the everything has been done from my part, from the builder's part, so this, uh, uh, the only pendency is, the only pendency is to get their, uh, uh, get the title deed transferred in the, in the name of the allottee, uh, get the sale deed executed in the name of allottee, uh, although they have paid the stamp duty while getting the registration of this agreement to sell. So that is the only obligation. And then we said that then we would not accept them as claimant because there is no liability in the books of account of the corporate debtor. The corporate debtor has already declared that sale in the, in the balance sheet. So therefore, the, they were not considered as claimant. However, when we prepared RFRP, then we make it very clear in the RFRP that whosoever will be, take over the company, he would have the obligation to get the uh, uh, occupation certificate because the project was same. Uh, the, pro the, the get the occupation certificate for the entire project and also uh, facilitate registration of uh, uh, the uh, title deeds for the uh, uh, home buyers who have already been offered possession. So we can start construction. Uh, uh, we can start whatever pending job is there in project to project. Uh, however, I feel that practically it is very difficult that a company having 20 projects and we should have a kind of uh, uh, project to project solution or uh, uh, what the order has already been passed by NCLT. Uh, what exactly we are doing in some cases, uh, as we understand that the resolution plan definition has been changed and in the resolution plan definition, we can also say that the resolution plan may include any scheme of merger, demerger uh, arrangement this is also the mandate of the uh, parliament that the resolution plan may include that. So uh, like uh, as an illustration, like suppose a real estate company has three projects at, at different, different locations and there are three people, different people, three different builders, they are interested in each project. Then we are guiding them to submit a resolution plan jointly. And uh, within the resolution plan, they will, they will uh, also propose a demerger uh, within the resolution plan, we would also propose the split of the balance sheets, assets and liabilities in those three companies. And then I understand that the NCLT has power to approve the demerger along with the resolution plan. And after the demerger is approved, each builder who was interested in different, different projects, they would continue those projects in the name of the uh, new company that they have created and has got the assets based on the NCLT order of demerger. So this is the uh, one question Ankit you were asking, but in case we try to do this uh, uh, resolution, like the only we try to restrict the insolvency to a project only, but that's what is not the mandate till the time NCLT specifically direct you that this is only uh, insolvency of a project and not for the entire company, which presently I think that it was not a case. The entire company which you are talking about is gone into insolvency NCLT has not considered uh, only the project consultants, project insolvency in this case. Ankit, you can go for the next uh, question. Next question is in 
terms of power, how powerful or effective is NCLT when compared to consumer court, high court, uh, national company, uh, national NCDRC? Yeah. So the first thing is that the everyone tries to say that the Supreme Court is more powerful. Yes, certainly Supreme Court is having the highest power. We have all seen in the case of Amar Bali. In the case of Amar Bali, they have used their in uh, the constitutional power and they have uh, taken up the project and they are finding the uh, any kind of uh, solution, viable solution, and uh, they are not uh, a kind of uh, restricting themselves on the provisions of uh, trans uh, the Transfer of Properties Act or, or RERA or, or IBC. They are only trying to find out, they, they are only, I think there is some disturbance from the participants and how can we handle this? Maybe Ananji and Umeshi can mute uh, if they're not speaking and then they can unmute in case they're... Yes. Uh, so I was on, uh, uh, and th that is the reason there is a... Uh, okay, so um, what I was saying, Ankit... Uh, We're on uh, Supreme Court's... Uh, so Supreme Court Amar has Pali. a Supreme Court has power in Amar Pali case, and uh, then Supreme Court like was approached by other companies again, and uh, the Supreme Court now is saying to all such applications that the Supreme Court is not interested in taking over uh, any other company like Amar Pali. Uh, similarly, the High Courts are also not taking such companies. The only um, uh, the, the only power that we have is in the in the, in the RERA court where they are ordering pool and uh, pool and build. Uh, so pool and build means like in case the construction is left to the extent of 10% or even 5% and they have that kind of money available with the home bars so they can pool their resources, they, the balance money that they uh, have to pay to the builder and then they can complete the construction by themselves. But that is that is possible only in case where the amount due from the home buyer is sufficient to complete the project. However, in case uh, uh, we consider the powers of the uh, the powers of the high court for ordering refund, yes, they can order refund. They can also order the uh, the the promoters should be prosecuted. They have the powers to stall the project. They have the powers to attach the project. But then how would the home buyers get their flat? That's the only question. The uh, RERA will also pass various orders like for the, the since there is a delay, the uh, agreement may be canceled and the builder should be given, builder should give this amount of advance along with the interest. Uh, similarly, the consumer court can also give the uh, amount paid plus interest plus damages. All this is basically an order in hand. Like in case there are 100 people who have got the order from RERA or 100 people who got the order from consumer court and they will go to the builder company uh, and the builder company will say that we don't have any money to give this uh, refund. And then what is the next solution? So then uh, maybe that somebody would file for the uh, recovery proceedings. The recovery proceedings mean that there may be a receiver which can be appointed and the receiver also would not be able to sell the assets. So this is what I'm trying to say, that these are, all these processes are very, very tardy, long-term processes, and refund order can be obtained, but real refund cannot be received in your bank account. That's what I'm, I'm trying to say. So in real estate companies, as I said, that the evaluation matrix, eligibility criteria, all the, these are different ways we, of making it so that it actually helps the real estate companies. So the uh, resolution, uh, as I said, uh, the uh, Home Buyers Association can definitely find a better resolution rather than the outside builders because the Home Buyers Association, uh, they can uh, definitely take over the company as a cooperative society. Like They can function it as a cooperative society, but then the company can be taken over. They can actually appoint their own directors. They can take over the shareholding of the company and finally they can manage the company. Uh, they, when they take over the company from NCLT, thereafter they may uh, appoint a builder uh, who actually will function looking, looking into the unsold inventory, uh, the balance construction, and also the balance payment, which is recoverable from the home buyers. So those kind of builders will come and they would uh, 
construct the uh, uh, the, the associations will come <clears throat> and they will construct the uh, property and will hand over the possession so this is uh, uh, our uh, way of saying that the ibc is the uh, uh, best solution for uh, the real estate companies we have also handled difficult cases like where this is called profile funding cases and we also have seen the double booking on one flat triple booking on one flat so all this all these are uh, resolvable uh, issues in case of double triple booking on a flat we only would see the first one who actually will have the flat who will have the right on that flat and the other one or other two they would be a simple creditors and uh, the coc uh, when they are all home buyers when they are all approaching the uh, resolution applicant in their own way most of the resolution applicants would agree that uh, in case there are over booking in case there are multiple duplicate bookings then they would uh, uh, see the unsold inventory can be given to those people who have been defrauded and certainly that actually will provide a resolution for double booking triple booking uh, so this is the way the ibc can resolve uh, all these uh, small matters so ankit is there any other question i think this is relating to the same project um, so basically the clarification that has come out is that that was not 20 projects but 90 plus projects out of which only 3 projects were uh but we have a clear title in the name of the company and other or are fraudulent sales so i think this can be taken up offline because this seems to be a very very specific case yeah um and uh, then we have a uh, uh, a question that what will be the solution for those who are cancelled who have cancelled their flats and their check is also bounced so wherever maybe they have got an order from uh, the rera with respect to a refund or where their flats are already cancelled that's a question that maybe we can answer that how is uh, how does ibc uh, take care of such situations uh, so simply uh, if a agreement has been cancelled and the check has been given to them so then uh, the uh, state the status of allotty cannot be given to uh, uh, these uh, people they would be a they would be a financial creditor because they had given advance uh, for uh, buying anything and the advance is not yet paid to them and the amount which is uh, recoverable by them that will be a financial debt it will be they will be financial creditor and they would participate into the coc meeting so when they would participate into the coc meeting i think the resolution applicant would be discussing with the coc meeting and they would also be considered in for allotment of a, a allotment of a flat rather than giving a refund at the same original rate however in most such cases the, when the ra or when the even the builders the even the associations when they are agreeing to that we will give you the flat at the same old rate then they would also ignore any kind of uh, interest or damages which has been awarded by any court or even as per the agreement because either you take the property or you claim your interest refund from the court so uh, this uh, uh, this way when we talk about the real estate companies so the in in creating a resolution plan also we have a, a lot of experience of uh, how the resolution plan of a real estate company can work uh, the assets and liabilities the economics of each project is considered uh, if there are multiple projects then we even try to tell the multiple people they can take over the companies uh, the tower wise uh, uh, economics also can be seen uh, is like which tower would have how many receivables and how much construction cost so in case the receivables are sufficient to complete the construction then the rp can also take up this construction right in the beginning of the cirp also so all this is a kind of experience that we have got now in the resolution plans and how to resolve uh, these issues uh, and see we can make even calls for the further payment from the allotees Uh, the further some committees also can be made for implementation of the project like the home buyers committees or even some experts can be added in that committee for supervision of the construction for quality of the construction so all this can be done uh, by the rp only in case there is a trust between rp and the home buyer if the rp is completely uh, upright 
and his thoughts are clear then the trust would prevail and home buyers will get uh, the construction uh, revived of course the money belongs to them but they would see transparency they would see participatory decisions and then only they would agree to give money for the purpose of revival of the construction uh, land development agency that we have already discussed that there are disputes possible with the land owners and land development agencies uh, the bigger issue is the cancellation of uh, their agreements before cirp during cirp they would not be able to uh, cancel because of section 14 but most of these these disputes are where they have cancelled much before but uh, the conclusion of the cancellation has not been achieved they have not been able to take over the possession of the land back and the land is still in the possession of the uh, company a uh, real estate company so these are uh, the ways that we try to handle uh, the um, real estate uh, uh, defaults i think ankit ji we can take in case there are some questions otherwise there is no point so ashwini stretching. ashwini so ashwini khanna ji has a very very similar questions i think one of the bigger problems in uh, that we need to address is and i think we have already talked about it that in he talks about a project where a company with a five projects Yeah. so he says that okay one project is having one person who wants to complete it so i think mr goel has already answered this ashwini ji that uh, if we that that we need to see that those all five projects how the nclt will look at those five projects is there any surplus in one of the projects where somebody wants to complete the project because the idea is if one project has a surplus then the other four projects should get benefited from that surplus so all these nitigrities need to be decided from a case to case basis and there is no standard answer wherever there are multiple projects at multiple stages of completion in the same company correct me if i'm wrong i think this is how uh, yeah. we can we can answer that yes i think uh, also, we... also yes please sir, one can also look at this is this is entirely dependent on the uh, allotees they can also look at forming the society which i mean we spoke about earlier in during this is uh, discourse that they can look at forming as a cooperative society and if no builders are coming then to save their own investment they should put in and file a resolution plan that that could be one possible solution but again as you right you said okay So, so my thought was, yeah. So that, so that's a solution, possible solution. The idea is to have a solution which has, which can get NCLT stamp, which can be executed, enforced at a later date. So, whatever that leads to. Uh, one question uh, is a very good question, where he's, where Mr. Partha Singh is asking that there are different stages for home buyers. Like he says that some home buyers might be where. Sales register, uh, say, sales has been uh, uh, registered to the name of the buyer, uh, registered but possession is not been given. Sales agreement is there but it, the agreement is not registered, or the registry is yet to happen, or nothing has been done. So he is asking in which situation is it beneficial for the home buyer to initiate CIRP. So I believe uh, uh, we answered this question uh, in the first part of this uh, webinar series that it will it might be beneficial for the home buyer to initiate CIRP uh, uh, wherever one there is no possibility for the uh, for the project to be completed uh, without the NCLT's involvement or without the without everyone voting and confirming a particular plan to be put in place and the other. possibility of initiating crp where it might be advantageous is where you are you know maybe one of the one or two people who are uh, who have not got your flats and the builder is otherwise uh, cooperating and getting everything done for the home buyers um uh, so, so in the, case uh, uh, ankit uh, in case of uh, such situations uh, i would again say that in case the uh, it is not possible to revive the construction with the money available with the home buyers uh, then uh, the ibc is the solution in case the money is available as balance payable to builder and that balance payable to builder collectively by all the allotees is sufficient to complete the construction then uh, the rera can actually give them an order which is called uh, pool and construct however in cases where the money is short and there are banks who have lien on this in these cases 
the difficulty would only be resolved under IBC one in case the liabilities are more than the assets. However, in case the like, let us only consider the liabilities of construction. So, in case the home buyers will start pool and construct without even getting any order from either RERA or from NCLT, then uh, the other stakeholders will object because the other stakeholders will say that whatever you are collecting, that you are not collecting in the account of the corporate debtor. So the company would still have a right to take from you the money which is due from you. So whatever you collect, whatever you spend on the construction, that would not be considered as money paid against your agreement. So that is a difficulty. So for doing this kind of construction, ERA agreement, ERA order for pool and construct or even the RP appointment, these two things are important. So in case any, any uh, real estate company is able to get a RERA order and they have sufficient resources to pool the resources and construct, so that would be the better advantage as of now, uh, because the insolvency is mm -hmm. taking time. So despite it is taking time, because in the past, I'll just give you the few, a few things, few facts. So this clarity that the home bars are financial creditors this actually came in December 2019. Immediately after that, when the clarification uh, actually started, uh, then the uh, this law came that this 100 uh, or 10% law came. Uh, then uh, the most of the applications which were pending in the court, those were stayed because of this law and no action, no order was passed during this period. Then there was COVID for one year and the court capacity of the NCLT or every other department was constrained. So then again, no order was passed. It is only after this Manish Kumar versus Union of India order of Apex Court, Supreme Court, that it is clear that this is the only way forward that we have to have 10% uh, or we have to have 10% or 100 uh, allottees. After that, if anyone is looking and tracking these uh, orders, you would probably see that most of the individuals who have filed their cases against the real estate companies are getting listed every day. And you would see in the case of SuperTech every day, 10 cases are being listed. That means that all those applications are being disposed of. And they have been told that it is not possible to accept your application. So those are being disposed of that you come in group. So uh, now it is the time that we can say that the resolution would be found fastest possible manner. Uh, because the hurdles are all over. When, uh, the Supreme Court has already given an order and it has been uh, uh, Noida Authority, Greater Noida Authority has already been considered as the operational creditor. See, the only difficulty which is presently pending is the cancellation of joint development agreement and cancellation of lease before the start of CIRP. And uh, as I think Mr. Anand has referred uh, order, Anandji, can you just repeat the name of that order of the Supreme Court where it has been held that uh, taking away an asset which is key to the company, uh, which basically will causing will cause death. What is that order, Anandji? Just a moment. I'll, I'll just give the number also. It is Gujarat Urja Nigam. Just a moment. I think Gujarat Urja Nigam is okay. The the the, the internet will find versus, that. Uh, Gujarat Urja Nigam versus Amit Gupta and others. And this is the Supreme Court order, no? Yes, yes, Supreme Court order. Civil appeal number 9241 of 2019. So this can be used like in case the lease, which is or in case the land is taken away uh, from the project, uh, that actually means that the company would actually lead to a death. So this uh, is re really important. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, I believe, uh, we have to uh, just uh, touch base on this reverse CIRP, uh, which is the Flat Buyers Association of Winter Hills. Ananji, in case you can just take up this for sure, about sure. three, min quickly, three minutes quickly, only. Uh, quickly take it through. See, uh, I, I must uh, uh, inform the viewers that uh, there is no provision as such in the law. This is something which uh, Honorable NCLAT uh, took this decision and this order was pronounced in February of 2020. Uh, this relates to a case called Flight Bar Association of Winter Hill, 77 Gurgaon versus Umang Realtor. Uh, let's go to the next slide, sir. See, the, the basic, basic, uh, this thing was uh, that the two Flight Bar Associations 
approach NCLT and they were not keen for a CRP process. And they made an, uh, they made a prayer to the court that if they can complete by themselves. And the builders were also keen. So the, the key decision here that was taken, the builder would step in, which is among real tech, their parent company. Well, they stepped in as an outside lender. So some kind of an interim finance. So they financed the rest of the cost of completion of the project. And the RP was instructed to complete the project and the builder were supposed to facilitate and cooperate with it. So if you see, in this, the ratio that was taken was the CRP of a real estate company possibly should be limited to a project as per the approved plan of the company. All the assets of the company cannot be maximized. Only the assets of that particular project needs to be maximized for giving or affecting the creditors and allotees of that project. Uh, there cannot be an intermix. The creditor of other projects cannot file a claim before the IRP for other projects, and that should not be claimed. A secure creditor cannot be provided flat apartment by preference over home buyers. In layman terms, what it says is it allows the promoters of the group to act as lender and cooperate with RP to ensure the project is completed. The reverse CRP proposed by NCLT so that the home buyers can get home and the resolution professional can maintain the going concern of the company. And this the domain, the key was the key point that the court kept in mind was that the project can be completed within the given period of time. And the interest of a lot is of the real estate company would survive. Of course, looking at the two other ambits of the listing that it will protect the capital invested and continue to hold the employment generated. So, so, so this was a specific case. And then uh, there were two more cases which came on the same line. So where the builders or the promoters of the project or the holding company of the project uh, is willing, this uh, reverse CRP can be continued and the directions were very clear. There are two other cases that we have mentioned, which were similarly in, in, uh, used uh, I mean, on the similar grounds of this judgment of Flat Bar Association of Winter Hills versus you know, the two other CR reverse CRP has been uh, ordered by on the flat mm -hmm. earlier. I think. No, these, these are different cases. These yeah, are different. these are different cases. So, what occurs to my mind here is, like uh, in this case, they have ordered for the reverse CIRP and uh, uh, builder was willing. But in cases senior where the builder is absconding, there are standalone projects, separate approvals are there for the plans. And if the home buyers of a particular project comes together, and become a resolution applicant before the RP for a particular project. And the RP make a moves because in this process, uh, no one will be the loser. Rather, the liability that, on the overall CD yeah. will be reduced in case it is approved. So that will be something which can be tried in certain cases, taking clue from the reverse CIRP orders of NCLAT in few cases. That out of the 19 cases that uh, we do uh, to the best of my recall, there are two cases where uh, the RWO has uh, got together hmm. different associations that come under one umbrella and they formulate a resolution plan. They have filed a resolution plan. So those resolution plans, and in one case, I think they have been voted and the application is to be submitted to the NCLT for approval. Another one is waiting for the approval. So, so this particular thing is being tried where the possibility of any outside builder coming and completing the project looks very clean. And a large number of home buyers stake uh, is there. So in that case, it would be uh, a, a prudent move to, to get the RWA to become a resolution applicant oh, and then up their own plan. That is the best course of action in such complicated situations because they have already lost substantially. They can reduce their losses. 
they pay substantial amount not getting flats by chipping in something extra if they get their property their reduces will be lost so so hypothetically so, uh, uh, i think anand ji that this is uh, also one of the options available like uh, the reverse insolvency but now i think mm -hmm. as far as the reverse insolvency is concerned uh, that kind of arrangement would be best uh, structured in pre packaged insolvency resolution plan so this which has been now announced and it is presently completely effective we can even file the application today because all this new rules regulations and the act has actually been notified so all this reverse insolvency type of scenarios can very well be covered under this uh, pre packaged insolvency resolution process we have also in this uh, uh, webinar which was in two parts part 1 and part 2 uh, we have deliberated what are the remedies available under the uh various other acts available and what are the remedies available under the ibc uh the wherever the uh, wherever the default is restricted to few allotees or home buyers they can definitely move to uh rera or they can move to consumer court and get their uh, resolution whereas the default is for the entire project and most of the allotees are under financial stress because the possessions are not being given in time then insolvency would be the right approach uh, the uh, rera is only practically possible when we can construct pool and construct scheme that is still viable in rera where the total money available with the home buyer is sufficient to construct if we can get the order from the rera that actually would be conclusive for that project uh that also helpful where the company is having 20 projects and the stress is only in one project that also would be useful in those uh, projects where only one project can be uh, given to the home buyer as pool and construct however in case of other where the construction cost is too much and the amount due from the home buyer is less and the unsold inventory the completion all that process has to be completed Uh, where the bankers are also there the outside liabilities are also there so all these processes are completed to be completed and concluded under ibc uh, so we uh, we can handle the uh, problems of uh, double booking duplicate booking profile lenders the uh, we can also handle the problem of uh, partially partially possession the uh, title transfer uh, all this can be done uh, during cirp so this uh, uh, way we would like to conclude that yes although rera and consumer court can do uh, a bit in the case of uh, uh, some defaults of uh, smaller magnitude where few home buyers are only uh, under some stress whereas for larger default or a project level default the insolvency would help and we expect that the insolvency would be much better now and because of the all the hurdles are over the covid scenario also kind of delayed various resolution plans uh, uh while we conclude this i think we can still see if there is any question that we can answer now ankit or if you can see that i don't think there are any open questions uh, so if there is uh, i don't think there is any question now so uh, I, we can conclude this uh, webinar uh, while we uh, convey our thanks to the participants uh, and also to the, to the panelists uh, uh, this is our endeavor to only share our knowledge and experience uh, with the with the uh, public at large uh, this is our way of learning and uh, thank you very much for uh, participating keep uh, uh, remain connected with us and we will continue our endeavor to share our knowledge and experience with uh, all thank you very much thank you mr anand thank you thank you, thank you everyone thank you, thank, you, thank, you, thank you thank you thank you very much thanks a lot all right thank you